Hi guys! In this video, I'm going to show you how to create realistic reflections in Photopea. Now, I have already opened the file with some buildings near the water. But as you can see, there is no obvious reflections. So this is the image we are going to work with today. I have already put a link of the image down in the description box so you can download it and follow the steps along or you can use your own photos. The first step, we're going to create a completely identical reflection of the buildings by flipping it. Let's make a duplication. And now we have two layers. First, let's um, lower the opacity of layer one so that we can see clearly. Now we have two layers like this. Now. Click edit. Here we have transform and flip vertically. So now let's place it where it should be. Because we're creating a reflection, so we should make the, the lines match like this. Okay. But now you can see that here is the darker part. So we want to get rid of that, right? You can, of course, use the eraser tool. But um, if you want to make it quicker, then let's just select this part. Select the part that you want to get rid of. And then create a mask by clicking it. OK, now, obviously, we need to reverse it by pressing Control i So now, you can see that uh, at the top of the mask is black. So we won't see the black part. We will only see the white part, which is the reflection. Now, we have created a reflection, but we can tell that it is not realistic because um, the reflection is not supposed to be completely the same as the real objects, right? So what we're going to do now is to blur it. You can use either motion blur or Gaussian blur, or even both, depending on how you want the reflection to look like. So let's click on this layer one and click flip, uh, filter, blur, I will just use Gaussian Blur. OK, you can already see the effect down there. Just see what looks best for your image. OK. So now we have created a blurred reflection. And next. Step three, let's create some waves on the reflection. Remember to turn the layer into a smart object so that we can adjust it later if we need to. And again, click on filter, distort, and wave. You will see some settings. They look intimidating, but actually they are not. I will explain to you one by one. First, here, number of generators means how many places you want to create wave. And length, let's take a look at this image. Wave, uh, wavelength simply means the, how long the wave is. And amplitude means how tall the wave is. And then the x scale x and y simply mean how much you want the wave to change horizontally and vertically. So you can just experiment yourself and play with those numbers and see which works best for your image. Let's see. You can just play with it. Minimal lens. Let's type in 1. There's no correct answer, so just see what 
works best for your image. I think the most critical part is probably here, scale X, because you can see that right now our reflection doesn't look like reflection at all. So let's lower it down to like this. So now it looks more like reflection, right? So this is what we're going to change. I think maybe seven. Okay, I think this looks pretty good. And if you want your waves to look um, like not like this, then you can click randomize and it will create some other waveforms. So just click it until you think it is all right. If you still think it's too much, then maybe I'll change, turn it down to six. Okay. So we have created waves on our entire reflection, but let's take a look at some art images. You can see that the waves are more obvious at the top, um, at the edges of the reflection, not in the entire reflection. So what we're going to do is create a mask and only create waves at the edges as well. So let's click on the smart filters and because you can see now the mask is white which means it will show everything. So let's inverse it, click Ctrl and I. So now it becomes black. You can see that even though we have created some waves but you cannot see any waves because it's all black. So we can use our brush tool to brush on this black mask and only brush on the edges. So we will only create waves partially at the places we want. See, the edges are showing as we brush at the top of the buildings. Okay, if now you still want to change the waves, you can just double click on the wave and maybe you want more. So we can change it afterwards. See? All right. So now we have already created a pretty good reflection of the buildings, but there is still something we can do. We can see that um, in the original image, the reflection in the water is much darker and less vibrant than the real buildings. So let's do the same. That's what we're going to do with the reflections we created. We're going to lower the contrast and uh, saturation. So let's create an adjustment layer. Click the curves. Let's lower it. But you can see that what we're going to do now will darken the entire image. But we only want to darken our reflections. So let's create a clipping mask. Clipping mask means what we're doing in the adjustment layer will only affect the layer right below it, which is layer one, not the background layer. So we will make the we will make layer one a little bit flatter, make it not that contrast. All right, and then we will also create a hue and saturation layer. Again, we will have to create a clipping mask so that it will only affect layer one. Now, lower the saturation.
All right, this looks pretty good. So this is our before, and this is our after. Let me conclude what we have learned today. First, we created an identical reflection. Next, we blurred the reflection and created some waves in the water. And in the last step, we made the reflection even more realistic by lowering the contrast and the saturation. So this is today's lesson. If you find this helpful, please give me a thumbs up and I will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>